and welcome to the Penguin Rundown. I'm Zach Humphreys. And I'm Pat Andrews. A little different look for us. We're inside the telecommunications studio this week on the Penguin Rundown. We will start with football. They ended their season 3-8. and eight. Their most recent loss came at, uh, at the hands of Indiana State 30-24. to 24. Big statistic to realize, 0-5 on the road this season for the Penguins. Yeah, a lot of that has to do with youth and their defense's inability to stop teams at the end of games. They started off the season 3-1. and one. Unfortunately, seven losses in a row, and they led in all seven of those games. It's unfortunate. You know, the offense, a lot to look forward to. Kurt Hess, Darius Bellamy, and Jermaine Cook all coming back next year. We can only hope that the defense can kind of, I don't want to blame it all on individuals in the defense. There's a lot of, you know, different lineups, different people playing every week. Couldn't really get, they couldn't really gel as a team on defense. Hopefully towards next year. You know, they start to develop as a team defensively. Yeah, they lost Andre Elliott, one of their key components on the defensive side in the first couple games, and that really hurt. They had to bring in some new guys, but you know that Coach Wolford is going to recruit heavily some defensive players. Yeah, Coach Wolford was the assistant coach at South Carolina before he came here. He knows South Carolina is one of the top-ranked defensive teams in the country every year. He knows what he's doing on the defensive side of the ball. He's got to, he has to get the players he wants there, and hopefully eventually he can you know, translate that South Carolina success here at YSU. Carry into women's volleyball, who ended the season at 2 and 27, 0 and 16 in the Horizon League. Kind of an unfortunate se season for Coach Burroughs in her first year here at YSU. But one thing to look forward to: only losing Haley Kapfer, bringing back Sue Blier, Hundell, a lot of players that you know they had good seasons. It just seemed like the team never clicked all at one time. They all had kind of their individual spurts. Yeah, 19 game losing streak to end the year, and uh, really they're going to have to just develop the young talent they have, and of course just keep recruiting new talent. Yeah, I mean that's recruiting, like like I said, only losing one player, just get everybody, just kind of like the football team, get them to gel together, play as a unit. They should be a good team next year. Swimming and diving on the on the other hand, two and two in duels this season in their fall portion of the schedule. Wins came over Butler and Niagara in uh, pretty convincing fashion. Finished second out of eight teams at the Radford Invitational as well. Now they get that month and a half break to kind of take their breath and uh, get ready for conference, which begins in January. Yeah, like you said, the conference play starts in January, and then in February they have the the Horizon League tournament. That's towards the end of February, so they still have you know a couple months to get ready for that. That's the highlight of their season. Men's basketball off to a great start. One of their best starts since uh, 2003, I believe. They're 4-1 and one right now. We'll take it to a Samford box score, which was the first game of the season. Youngstown State just snuck it out. 64-61. Samford, a team that sometimes makes that big dance, the tournament. Samford went on to beat Auburn after they played Youngstown State, actually. YSU, 36%, 23 of 60. Samford shot 50%, 23 of 46. They run that Princeton-style offense. They get a lot of good looks. Deshaun Brooks had 20 points, six rebounds, and two steals. Devontae Maimon, 15 points and four assists. Vita Solskis had the double-double with 13 and 10, and Damian Urgel added seven rebounds as well. Now we'll take it into a Buffalo highlight, the math conference playing host, or excuse me, playing at Youngstown State. We'll go to the highlight. There's Coach Slocum getting his troops ready. And Buffalo, a team probably projected right in the middle of the MAC conference. This would be a good win if they can get one. Yeah, like you said, Youngstown State playing a heavy MAC schedule to kind of get ready for their Horizon League schedule. And there we see Devontae Maiman hitting the triple early on for the Penguins. Yeah, it wasn't a good start, but they got things rolling. Here's Solskis finding Ergel underneath for an easy deuce. Yeah, Ergel, like not their biggest you know center they've had, but very athletic, can jump out the roof and just has good presence down there. There's another guy from a junior college, Maiman. Didn't do a dot offensively where he was prior, but he's asked to do a lot more with the starting two position. And here we are with Blake Allen hitting the triple, giving the Penguins a 32-20 lead late in that first half. And Maiman can do the same. He'll shoot it from long range as well. There's the sweet stroke and jumper. Putting the Penguins up five at this point, sort of midway through the second half. Here we'll see the miss, but the putback from Damian Ergel, right spot, right time there for the transfer. And this play was such an awkward move. Here's Ergel, gets the rebound, starts dribbling. Now watch the head coach. You see the left hand? Yeah, Ergel loses his dribble, but I mean, obviously he's there to grab the ball. And like you see, like you said, the coach grabs the ball. They call it out on Youngstown State, so Buffalo gets the back. And as you can see the score, it's only a four-point game. A big time in the game. Eventually, the Penguins would really start collapsing defensively, and they did not have anything to do with it. Yeah. Youngstown just reclaims the ball, and eventually they're just going to run this baby out and get a huge win. Yeah, big win over, like you said, a middle-of-the-road Mac opponent. 64-53 is your final from the Beagley Center. And we'll get to that box score for you here in a minute. The fans were all enjoying it as well. 64-53 is your final. So Buffalo shot 
39% from the field, YSU only shooting 38%, but a lot of offensive rebounds, second chance points, and making free throws led to uh, that victory. Kendrick Perry, eight points, four rebounds, four assists. Ashton Moore with 13 points. Uh, Trey Brewer pitches in 10 rebounds, and Damian Ergel really filling up the rebounding sheet with 14 for the Penguins. After that Buffalo contest, they went on and played at Akron, and they were a defensive rebound away from stealing one at Akron, just could not get the rebound, ended up squirting back out for three. They got the three, sent it in overtime, and usually the home team wins in overtime. Yeah, like you said, the home team, when you go into overtime on the road, it's overtime's anywhere, you know, playing the extra minutes, usually the most conditioned team is in you know, the best position to win, but especially at home, you have that home crowd amping you up. Gave Akron that extra boost, and they really put it to the Penguins in overtime. And they didn't have a break after that. They jumped right into another MAC team. That's Toledo. They had them at home. We'll go to the highlight. We'll start it off for you. Dan Bowler getting the early deuce. And we'll see a little bit from Kendrick Perry, as you and me have labeled him, KP3, here for the Penguins, the freshman. Just so quick off the dribble. There's a scoop up with the left hand. Here's KP again, getting the pass from Maimon. He'll go all the way and lay it up with a right hand. A nice steal by Maimon and you know, Perry able to finish off with that one-on-one. -on -one. And there's Perry also sharing it, finding Maimon down low for the end one. And then it's the Lithuanian, the sweet stroke in Lithuanian. Vitas Solskis in the corner. He's usually pretty good from there. It's a big spot if you check that score at the bottom. That tied it up. Midway through the second half, and there's Damian Ergel down low, giving the Penguins a lead at the time. Here they are, down one again. Ergel again with the bucket. And then it's kicked out to Deshaun Brooks. A lot of offensive firepower off that bench. Number 23 can stroke it. That's a big three off the bench for Brooks. And here's Ergel with the reverse. And then the biggest shot of the night goes to Ashen Ward. Spot up, triple, boom. Yeah, four point game. That was the dagger, as Dan Raftery would put it. <laughs> for the Penguins, giving them the 73-67 victory over Toledo. Like you said, their second win against the MAC team. And Toledo's struggling a bit at 0-6, but that doesn't uh, say that they're still not a MAC school, still a very good win for Youngstown State, who moved to 3-1. They shot 43% with Toledo shooting 44%. Kendrick Perry really started turning it on. This was his turning point, I think, as a freshman. Had 12 points and 6 assists. Maimon added 12. Solskis doing what he does, 20 points, nine boards. Damian Urgel had his best night as a Penguin, 15 points, six rebounds, and six blocks. That six blocks really stands out to me personally. And now we'll go to St. Francis, who's the most recent game the Youngstown State Penguins played at home. Here comes a box score, but first the highlight. Here we go, St. Francis. We're gonna get things started here with Trey Brewer contributing up the bench. You can see why he jumped off to a very big lead. He's put him up 17-2 right there. Here we'll see. Ergel kicking it out to Solskis for three. Giving the Penguins a 28-13 lead. Towards the second half of this first half. And here we'll see KP3 again off the dish from Maimon from deep in the Beagley Center, giving the Penguins an even bigger lead than they already had. Here comes Bowler, the senior. Good footwork here just for the easy deuce. Penguins starting to run away from St. Francis. Damian Ergel likes PB and J. You know what that stands for? Peanut butter and jam. The huge flush from Urgel, putting number 43 for Fr St. Francis on a poster. And look at the stare down after, like, get out of my way. And here we are towards the end of the game. A couple substitutes in for YSU, but not shy to shoot there is Deshaun Brooks for three. And here we'll see Mike Podolsky, my classmate from Canfield, getting into the action. We'll see him in transition. Spots up for three. And he got here for. We all know he can shoot the basketball. He got his first shot and first one fell, and the bench was loving it for Podolsky. Just a hard worker, definitely. 93-60, or excuse me, 91-63 was your final. Four and one, Youngstown State goes. St. Francis falls to two and four. YSU shot 52%, 30 for 58. San Francis only 41%, 26 of 64. Kendrick Perry, what a game. 19 points, five rebounds, five assists. Maimon had 15 points, five steals. Solskis. 22, 7, and 4. Damian Ergel added 7 and 9 as well. We'll take a short little break and be back with women's basketball. <laughs> 